Tonight, Ricardo Richards, otherwise called Kaka, who disarmed and shot a policeman at the National Chest Hospital on Friday, March 12, before escaping, has been captured. Eight additional COVID-19 related deaths, all women, increases fatalities from the virus to 519, while the country recorded 604 new cases of the virus yesterday. Still tonight, Prime Minister Andrew Holness advises that he will be announcing new and stronger coronavirus, COVID-19 infection prevention and control measures when the current provisions expire on March 22. A new set of stronger measures designed to protect our healthcare system and save lives in the short term. And the NHT is to extend the cash refund granted to public sector workers to April 2022. Good evening. In a news update tonight, Ricardo Richards, otherwise called Kaka, the man who disarmed and shot a policeman at the National Chest Hospital on Friday, March 12, before escaping, has been captured. He was reportedly caught at a guest house in St. Andrew. Still making the news tonight, eight additional COVID-19 related deaths, all women, takes the total of fatalities from the virus in Jamaica now to 519, while the island recorded 604 new cases of the virus yesterday. Total confirmed cases stand at 33,970. According to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, seven of the women were from Kingston and St. Andrew aged 55, 74, 81, 89, 71, 77, and 68 years. The other death is of an 80-year-old woman from Hanover. Now, of these 604 new cases, there were 338 females and 266 males, ranging in age from 2 days to 96 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew with 130 cases. St. Catherine recorded 102 cases, Portland, 82, St. Mary, 51, Clarendon recorded 41 cases, Manchester recorded 38, Westmoreland recorded 36 cases, Trelawney and St. James recorded 30 cases each, St. Anne, 26 cases, St. Elizabeth, 25 cases, Hanover recorded 9 cases, and St. Thomas, 4 cases. The island also recorded 195 recoveries, taking the total of recovered persons now to 15,810. In other news tonight, the Jamaica Labour Party's JLP's councillor, Darren Wood, of the Ferry Hill Division in Portland Eastern, died yesterday from complications as a result of COVID-19. Now, Councillor Wood reportedly passed away at the University Hospital of the West Indies yesterday morning after being admitted there on Wednesday evening. Wood was first rushed to the Port Antonio Hospital on Wednesday afternoon after falling ill and was later transferred to the University Hospital. Councillor Wood reportedly received his first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine last week. Still making the news tonight, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has advised that he will be announcing new and stronger coronavirus COVID-19 infection and prevention and control measures when the current provisions expire on March 22. While making his 2021 to 2022 budget debate presentation in the House of Representatives yesterday, he said the decision to strengthen the measures comes against the background of COVID-19 hospitalizations now exceeding the number of beds available. The second wave of increased hospitalization followed and we came close to exhausting capacity, but it did not overwhelm us, as you can see, there between September and October and November. We had an increase in October, but it petered out because of measures that we had put in place. We reinstated tighter measures. 
which reduced infections and stabilized the number of hospitalizations to well below capacity. We managed to maintain this position through Christmas and up to the first week of February. We are now experiencing a third wave of increasing infection spread, which is much larger than before and more dangerous in terms of the threat to life because of the associated hospitalization numbers. Hospitalization now exceeds bed capacity by as much as 15% in some instances. This means that someone who needs to be taken into a ward may not have a bed readily available and may have to wait. This places great stress on our already overburdened doctors and nurses. It potentially could impact the mortality rate. More persons could die. Mr. Holness also gave an update on the new ticketing system under the Disaster Preparedness Act. The current set of measures expire on the 22nd of this month. With hospitalization numbers continuing to exceed capacity, daily positivity rate in the range of 30% of and our estimated infection reproduction rate continuing above one. I will be announcing a new set of stronger measures designed to protect our healthcare system and save lives in the short term, which eventually protects and preserves our economy and livelihoods in the long term. Madam Speaker, today, the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development tabled amendments to the Disaster Risk Management Act, as promised, to implement the new ticketing system for enforcement of infection prevention and control measures. The government is prepared to have the bill reviewed by a joint select committee over the weekend and debate and pass the bill next week if the opposition is willing. This would make the new measures more effective if we have this amendment in place. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he intends to get vaccinated against the coronavirus COVID-19 in keeping with the prioritization order. Mr. Holness advised that he will receive his vaccine during the phase of the exercise targeting frontline public sector workers. 3.7% of those who contract the disease in the age group 60 to 69 have died and they account for 20.9% of all deaths. 7.3% of persons who contract the disease in the age group 70 to 79 have died and they account for 24.5% of all deaths. 12% of those who contract the disease in the age group 80 to 89 have died and they account for 19.6% of all deaths. Clearly, to reduce the risk of loss of life and hospitalization, the population 60 years and over should be the priority focus after healthcare workers. For those who have a fears of the vaccine, the case fatality statistics speak for themselves. Take the vaccine. Madam Speaker, I intend to get vaccinated. But like the leader of the opposition said in his presentation, I will wait my turn. Still making Mellow TV news, Prime Minister Holness says the States of Emergencies, SOEs, have worked to help in the reduction of murders and shootings. Our security forces have been called upon to play a major supporting role in the management of the pandemic. Increasingly, our police and military is being called upon to deal with unconventional threats and give support in non-traditional areas. 
Some have lost their lives in the course of duty. A fair assessment will conclude that they have performed their roles creditably. They have been committed and acted with restraint. And I wish to express our deep appreciation for their service. Madam Speaker, the most pressing matter of concern for most Jamaicans regarding our sense of security is the murder rate and its increasing intractable nature. We can report that we ended 2020 with less murders than the previous year. And since 2018, we have essentially flattened the murder curve. There is no doubt that our use of the states of public emergency have worked to reduce murders and shootings wherever they have been deployed. Body-worn camera systems are now being rolled out for members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF. Prime Minister Holness said that the cameras will provide protection for members of the JCF and the public through the provision of an objective view of incidents. The JCF has also benefited from significant investments in building a more standardized, fit-for-purpose and newer transportation fleet in order to improve the response times to calls for service and provide greater police efficiency through the use of integrated database, fleet management and tracking systems. Now we talk about that for years, Madam Speaker, for years, why we don't put trackers on the car? Of the, well, it is there now. It is there now. I'm also pleased to report that body-worn camera systems are now being rolled out in the police force. This will provide, this will provide protection for members of the JCF and the public through the provision of an objective view of incidents and have a positive impact on the speed at which incidents are investigated and disposed of. Madam Speaker, this administration has taken a carefully studied and strategic approach to security and crime reduction. Our strategy is multidimensional, practical and citizen focused. Through our steady and deliberate efforts, we have been seeing results and I am confident that we will overcome the crime monster in Jamaica. The St. Andrew police have now commenced a probe into the deaths of two men from St. James whose bodies were found with gunshot wounds in an abandoned motor car. The vehicle was found parked along Maple Leaf Avenue, St. Andrew, yesterday afternoon. Investigators say one of the victims was discovered lying on the rear seat of the vehicle, while the other was discovered in the trunk. Further reports coming into our news center tonight are that shortly after 3.30 p.m., residents noticed the Toyota 110 motor car abandoned along the roadway. Now, upon closer observation, it was revealed that blood stains were on the trunk and sections of the door. The police were summoned, and upon the arrival of the lawmen, the bodies were discovered with multiple gunshot wounds. The scene was then processed, and the bodies transported to the morgue for a post mortem examination. The police say the identification cards on the victims revealed that they were both from addresses in St. James. Continuing with the news tonight, Timon Williams, Nadine Aldridge, and Shakina McLeod, the three women who have spent months behind bars in relation to last year's severe beating of 17-year-old Kaylan Dowdy, were offered bail in the sum of $850,000 when they appeared before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court yesterday. All three accused who hail from the Grants Pen community were ordered to reside outside the parish and also to report to the police station daily. One of the attorneys representing the woman told the court that the allegations did not reveal that Williams was involved in the attack, but was only involved in the physical altercation with another woman who attempted to join the fight. All three women, along with two other accused, Christiane Lewis and Yolande Vassal, who were granted bail in January, were ordered to return to court on June 16. We go now to news from St. James as members of the Anti-Lottery Scamming Task Force
conducted a special operation in Duckett's Road, Cambridge, in the parish. The operation resulted in the seizure of two firearms and 175 9mm rounds, while two men were arrested and charged with lottery scamming offences yesterday. Charged with possession of identity information with intent and possession of an access device are 24-year-old Brian Price and 20-year-old Navar Gale. Both men are recording artists of Duckett's Road, Cambridge. Two cellular phones and a composition notebook belonging to Price and Gale were analyzed and found to contain identity information of persons residing overseas. The men were subsequently arrested. Additionally, an adjacent open lot was searched, which led to the recovery of two Taurus 9mm pistols, along with two magazines containing 33 9mm rounds and a plastic bottle containing 132 9mm rounds. Still making the news tonight, one M1 assault rifle along with 8.30 rounds of ammunition were seized on Plum Lane, Kingston 8 on Wednesday, March 17. Two men were arrested in connection with that find. Reports from the Constant Spring Police coming into our news center tonight are that at approximately 10.25 p.m., lawmen were on patrol when two men were seen acting in a manner that aroused their suspicions. The men ran onto a premises where they were pursued and accosted. A search of the area resulted in the weapon and ammunition being found. Both men were subsequently arrested and taken into custody. Meanwhile, an assault rifle along with four 7.62 rounds of ammunition were seized in Roses Valley, Balaclava, St. Elizabeth yesterday. Reports from the Black River Police are that between 6.30 a.m. and 10 a.m., an operation was conducted in the area. During the operation, a premises was searched, resulting in the weapon and ammunition being found in a bag under floorboards. Four persons were taken into custody. However, their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. And those are some of the stories making news. We will return with other stories as the National Housing Trust, NHT, is to extend the cash refund granted to public sector workers to April 2022. But first, we'll take a break and then it's over to Christopher Scott with the sports. <laughs> 